Okay, I think we ought to get going. Um, can I welcome you to uh, the second of this term's artist talks? Uh, again, I'd like to <coughs> thank the London Consortium for sponsoring them. And as you may have gathered, uh, we had sort of tried to kind of get artists whose work in one way or another uh, kind of related to kind of models or to a dimension of the problem raised by models. Uh, the second talk is to, uh, is to be given by Jonas Dahlberg um, from Sweden. Um, Pavi and I uh, had originally <coughs> seen some of his work in Stockholm about three years ago and were extremely kind of impressed and excited by it and we're very pleased that it's been possible to get him to come over uh, to talk today. Um, Jonas um, already kind of showed at the 2003 Venice Biennale <coughs> and in 2004 um, represented Sweden at the Sao Paulo Biennale. Um, so I'm not really going to say much by way of introduction. Uh, he's going to kind of show stuff and talk and then afterwards I hope there will be um, an opportunity for a fairly kind of systematic uh, discussion uh, which will be led by Pavin Adams. I'd like you to welcome Jonas Stahlberg. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I work with, with film and architecture and will mainly talk about my work in, uh, in maybe three different levels, also almost like uh, three levels of scale. Uh, or I will try to do that. Uh, one is the, the set design or the object in itself. The other one is, is uh, what you see, like the films or, 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 or what it, it's about. And the third level is how it's installed or where you see it. And I will start to show some really uh, old works or from this first work is really from, from uh, my first year at the uh, art academy and uh, it's not really a work it's more like a process but uh, but uh, it contains kind of many levels of what I have been working with uh, later on in terms of, of uh, private and public and, and surveillance and uh, to see or to be seen or inside and outside and for this, I, I, I kind of uh, very often use architecture models and, and, uh, and different kind of, of architect architecture. So this is called Safe Zones Number One. And it really starts uh, with a story, which you can read. It's from 1996, or I started in Finished. <laughs> so here is the apartment of my neighbor or some some views. And here is sort of a drawing between where I reconstructed my, my neighbor's apartment, which is to the left, and uh, my apartment is to the right. And uh, it shows like every possible angle of seeing between this apartment and create this kind of 
the safe zones in my apartment is the is the parts where where I furniture up my or my apartment, and the safe zone for him is the parts which I can't really see. So they are kind of just made out or made up. And uh, for this this work, I did also sort of. In the end of the work, I also uh, started to build models of both of the apartments. And uh, when uh, when my neighbor suddenly had moved out, it was also by uh, by chance that I also should move out. So what I did when I emptied my my uh, apartment from all the furniture, I searched it through with a video camera. And I also did the same thing with the, with the model. So I also searched through a model with a video camera. And what's happening there, or was, was, uh, what uh, was surprising for me was that the model looked really real. And uh, the real apartment looked like a dollhouse. So in this kind of work, it's like I, I started to, to think a bit of starting or how it was possible to use <coughs> models in terms of reality and how it was possible to play with that and uh, and uh, and also how to to what happening here is like it's really my story in a way but what i'm a bit interested in is to to take it to another level where i i also bring in the viewer in this situation to really feel the feel the gaze or feel how it is to be seen at or to see. So in this other, other work, which is called Memory, it's also uh, a work uh, from 1999, and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, also a work which is based on a, on a story. Here is the house. <laughs> and what I did here is that I, in a park in Sweden, I, 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 I built a, a copy of the ho house, like almost like a full scale model. Uh, and inside, inside the house on the, on the right wall, you have the text which you were reading. And on the left wall inside the house, you have a picture on the original house. Which means that when you're standing and reading the text and watching the watching the, the image, you're standing in a, exactly the same positions as the one that you're reading about. <laughs> which is like almost like you're reading about yourself seen from the outside. Or the ideal situation if you really, because the house is it's four meters, it's a cube with f four meters, and it's really like it's so private, so if someone are in the house when you're approaching it, it's, uh, you kind of wait outside and, uh, and you exchange place with them, you go in and they go out. So it's also like you're reading about what you saw before and at the same time you're reading about how someone sees you. And it, I don't know how good that worked, but it's, it's uh, uh, what is also quite, it also became some sort of sentimental memory temple or almost like it's how it looks like also uh, so it's what I wanted to do it's like because it's, it's still it was still kind of stories which I which I worked with which was not the viewers own stories so so I, I kind of were interested in to to uh, to take it one step further when I, where I bring in the viewer in a position where it's just about themselves. So it's just, uh, it's really, it's not the story, it's what you, what you as a viewer see, it's really all about themselves and what they think in that situation. And this is a work which I've done a couple of times since, also since 1999, and this is a work from 2003, which I think is the work which is which works best and it's really it's not 
a work which is presented as an art piece. It's, it's uh, installed in a really posh restaurant in Stockholm. And what, I, what I've done is I have uh, two surveillance monitors. It's one up here and it's one there. And there are one is placed in the, the left image is uh, the restaurant area and the right image is kind of the bar and, and club area. And what you see on the monitors is, uh, is the views outside the toilet. So it's almost like you can, can see if it's a queue or not or if it's possible to go there. Ah, it's no one there, I go there now. And when you, come, when you go there, you, you uh, meet the next monitor. And it, it might also be a queue that suddenly arrived that you don't really know where it came from. Or on that monitor you see views from the toilets. So you see it shift, the monitor shifts every four seconds and you sh see different views from the toilets. So you are standing in a position there, there you are really the, the one that surveils and watches and controls the room, or at least you think so. And you need to take the decision to go, go inside and kind of exchange place with yourself and or that someone else will, will control you when you go in. But when you go in, you meet inside the walls is these small models. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really like a, a quite badly made, I built them with the, with the camera and the monitors I stop when the fiction works so it's really easy to see that it's you see how it's like really crappy made with paper and and, and so on so it's really hard to to believe that what you saw outside was was uh, what you see in here and at the same time you can't really be both inside and outside at the same time so you don't really know that it works but you are in a, in a kind of a fictive safe zone where they from the outside st still think they uh, control the space, which is kind of the safest place in the world when, than when you are in there and you can do whatever, I don't know, <laughs> you're supposed to do in there. But it's, and in this, in this uh, uh, work, I, I try to play with the, with the model in, 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 in sort of three ways it's it's like both the model to use it as as actually something real that that are not representing something else it's just what it is and at the same time it becomes an art object or almost like a sculpture thing when you when you when you see it and and the reference to to uh, to uh, to the fiction outside so it's also like a film set in real time and, and uh, it creates this, this sen almost like a sensation of scale where, where, you, where it becomes uh, uh, almost like you're sucked into a big hole of, of emptiness when you meet this, you meet the model and you, and you realize that you almost are seeing yourself in miniature and it's also quite funny when you, when you kind of, and it's great that it is in a public space, which is uh, so people really, really, uh, I don't know, get angry and and uh, and um, yeah, are a bit surprised when they are, are are approaching the toilets and and think they will be surveilled. On the outside, it's also it's between the areas of of this restaurant and uh, it's it's the there is the. The model for the for the monitors, which were in the um, in the bar and in the restaurant, which are showing the outside of the toilets. Mm. Yeah, this is a work which. Origins from it's it's comes also from surveillance in a way. It's it's built on a on a kind of a panoptic system or a panoptic model. I I show you an installation view just to to show 
as the beginning to show how I usually install them. So my films are, are, are often shown as almost like architecture in architecture and they have no sound. So the soundtrack in the, in the space become the, the sound in, in, uh, in the film. And sometimes I play with, also in this case, I played with the model a bit, so I showed the model. But I start to show the film for you, so you can see a bit. And I can also tell you that it's, please interrupt and ask questions during the time. It's very nice if it becomes a dialogue also a bit. In all of my films, I talk a bit during the time. I don't know if it's good or not, but it's, uh, I'm so bored of seeing them myself, so I need to say something. <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> but it's in all of my films, I use some sort of archetypes of, of architecture, almost like architecture that I think is, is uh, uh, connected to a collective memory bank. Or, or you, you kind of recognize the spaces you see, but you have, you have, uh, you're not sure where, you, where you have seen them, if you have been, been in them, or if you have seen them in, in a movie or in a picture, or a painting, or, or if you just have seen them before in the movie that you are watching. It's like it's, it's very, it's like a repetition of of, of rooms, which is really which, with small, small changes. So it's pretty hard to, to see the differences in the, in, the, in the spaces and it's pretty hard to see if you have or to know if you have been there before. And this film is, is made, also the next film I will show is made in a model which is a circular. You saw it on the installation drawing in the beginning. So it's made in a model which, oh. <coughs> which is a circular model. And uh, the camera pans in the middle of the model 360 degrees in 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, it's come back to a point where it has been before, but it keeps on filming. So it's a film on 40 minutes, where you, after 10 minutes, comes to points where you have been before, but in a different time. And the camera kind of replaces the, the watchtower of Panopticon, which means that the, the viewer in the end replaces the, the watchtower of Panopticon. And it continues forever. You feel, I don't know if I, <laughs> for how long I, maybe it's enough. Mm. 
So here is the plan drawing for the model. In 18 sections, three of the sections are repeated twice, which means that you see them, you see them two times in, in one circle. And, and uh, I kind of changed the light just a little bit slightly on these uh, three, three ones. So it's like you come to a place, but, but it's slightly different. And it's based, the, the model is based, or, or the architecture in the model is based on a, on a, on a Danish painter called Hammershøi, which, uh, which uh, did these paintings. One of the sections is really one of his paintings, and, and, uh, and uh, he painted in his apartment in all his life. It's really nice paintings. It's a bit weird. But, uh, and the, the, paint, uh, the names are just open doors on these paintings, and it's from like 1890 something. And what I do here is also, it's sort of a connection to the, to the safe zones, but the, but the reverse, what I, I just built what, what the camera can see, it's, I don't build anything else, it's not necessary to do that. And in this, I also had some, some uh, idea that in the beginning, when I started to use models, I had an idea that I, I, I or I made some grammatics for myself that I, I wouldn't, I shouldn't use materials that was the same that I was, I, I shouldn't do a print or to, and to scan a, a floor and to, to put it, uh, or to, so I build all in paper and in strange materials that I found and after a while, I gave that up, but it, because it became too or become too difficult, and it's really not not any meaning with that. In case in this term, it's also in the in in terms of this work, I, I I worked a lot with the with the model also as a sculpture. So it's uh, so every in every is step I took with where, where I created kind of the set design for the for the model I, I also took like sculpture decisions or uh, that I really wanted it to be be an object also because I was sure that I was going to to show the model when I showed the film then I, I changed that after a while so I just show the model like two times with the film or two or three times and uh, because I think the film contains the information uh, that you need to know anyway, you can see that it's a model. You can you can see that it's it's uh, it's in a circle, but but uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to see it, but it's possible. And if you, when I show the model, the the sensation of the model becomes uh, too, or it becomes too focused on that sensation. So all the all the other stuff that the work could be about kind of disappears in, in when, pe when people or the audience see the, the viewers see the, see the model, then they are like totally amazed of the model and that's the, so I, I, let me see. Can I ask you? Yes. Yeah, it's for me. It's like it's different, it different ways. I think I'm not sure that I understand the question complete. But it's like also the space where you are in. What I try to do is, with the films and with with the how I present my films, is to put to trick the viewer to come to into a position, in 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 that space when th they are much watching the film. So they are in kind of a mental state of, of their own rooms to kind of bring them into a, a sort of a, a memory labyrinth. And, uh, and uh, that's why the use of, I'm not interested in, in this case to kind of create architecture with, with the, like uh, do some fantastic, brilliant architecture with the film or w in, in the films. So I use kind of, Types of architecture that I think very many people recognize, and yeah, I, it reminds me a bit like Lost Highway of David Lynch, where the housewife, the ca main character, lives in the corridor where he walks into, and they kind of he disappears in 
Ja. No, but uh, David Lynch has a very interesting way of, of working with space in his movies. Absolutely. And this is like uh, how I presented the next film, which is called Untitled Vertical Sliding. This is how I present it in, in, uh, in uh, Venice Biennale. I will also show another way how I presented it later or uh, after the, the slides of the models. Because this is like, if I talk about space and how I try to work with the viewer and how I try to work with passages and so on to get the viewer into a position of being where I want, uh, want them to be, I very often try to, to make the viewer meet the film before they actually meet the film without knowing it. So they are in a state of mind which suits the film. And in this case, it's not really like that <coughs> because it's in some places you not have the possibility of, of doing that. Then you're just happy to get a room. <laughs> and, uh, but I will show actually a, a an installation from London at a place called Milch later, I think. Or maybe not, ah, I don't know. But it's like, uh, we'll see. I don't remember actually. And where I work with space in a different way. And this film is also based on a panoptic model in a bit different way. And it's the architecture from, from this film comes from, from a, a film situation or from one of the corridors of The Shining, which has been used in very many art pieces and, and in many, uh, yeah, has, has been used a lot. And then I repeat that kind of architecture or the scale of that architecture. What I use is the, 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 the kind of the, the narrow corridors, which are almost like they are, 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 are private. It's like they could be more, it's like, yeah, they are, are a bit, they don't feel like a, a huge like public public hotel or something. They feel more like uh, something else in terms of, of, of uh, how you, you recognize the spaces. What I did with the the corridor from The Shining that it's the it's the corridor where where Danny meets the twins the first time I think and it's uh, but I took away the the window that are because it's a window in that corridor and I didn't want any exits or or, or any possibilities to get out. Yeah, it's like, uh, I kind of like that it becomes, that uh, the sound becomes the, or the soundtrack is the sound in the space which you are in for the moment. And it's, it's almost too, or it's, it's too easy to put sound on it, or it's too easy to, to kind of, of, uh, of uh, create uh, uh, some sort of narrative structure when, when you start to use sound and, uh, and the dramaturgy and so on. And I, w I, I really want to avoid the narrative structure as much as possible. But I might have, uh, it's like, we'll see. I, all the time I think of sound, it's like if I should have it or, or, or not. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But you, you usually get two versions by, by yourself because <coughs> when, you, when you exhibit your works in a group exhibition, you get someone else's sound coming into your space. So you kind of, 
and it's very often some some kind of cheesy electronic music that kind of fits okay to the so <laughs> makes it a bit more contemporary <laughs> I actually got a review on the first film where uh, where it was in the review that I have great sound because it was a sound from a, on a piece from the from the upstairs from another floor in an exhibition with some uh, what you say uh, bell uh, church bells it was very dramatical <laughs> No, it was not uh, London. This is how I presented. I, I kind of like to work with, with, to put my films together, to add, the, to add one to another, and to, to play, to because they can they add the information in a in a quite nice way when you walk in space from one room to the next room and these kind of movements. In this, in this installation, I have I have. Uh, it's in a gallery which is downstairs, and so what I do here is that I use the movement from the from the viewer when they walk downstairs, and and the first thing they meet is that they meet the the vertical film. So they kind of just the film let them continue the the movement down, and then they move horizontally in the space and meet the horizontal film. So it's kind of playing with the viewer's movement in the space. And I very often, I, if it's possible, I also try to work with, with <coughs> in terms of film space. It's, it's, and in group exhibitions, it's, it's very often quite bad presented because it's, it's always these black boxes with one entrance door, and, and you go, in, you, you are supposed to, to be able to, to be in the state of mind on the film immediately when you kind of open or, or going through the ugly cloth or what they have there. And and uh, and then what's happening also, and then it's extremely dark in the space. So 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 the it takes a while until you can see something, and and the the people are just stopping just inside the door, and it's enough if it's three people there. It looks like the space is full. So and usually they spend like two minutes in a in maybe in, in a group exhibition, and which means that they after a while they can see in the space, but they also see that it's no idea why why to actually walk into the space because they can stand in the entrance door and see the film there. So it creates n n no movement of the of the viewer, which is a bit weird to actually work with film in in uh, in museums and in in uh, in space. Where you where you don't work with the viewer in terms of, of movement and so on, so it becomes like a kind of a bad cinema experience without any without any uh, any of the good parts with cinema where you have the the passages and so on. You go and you buy your ticket, you buy candy, you go into the sem semi dark situation where where you have the the commercials, and then even more dark when you see the when you see the trailers for other movies, and when you meet the film, then you are ready for fiction. But in in the art world, you, very often you, you're supposed to just like this be there, which is uh, I don't think it's so so good in, for these group exhibitions. This is the model before I put it together, and this for the vertical sliding and the, this model is a bit more complicated built because here I, I, I built so everything is bent after a circle and everything gets bigger and bigger as further from the center it, it comes which means that the first door in the corridor could be that size and the last door is big as this and everything is bent and it gets bigger in, in both ways and I film with the camera lying down because it's impossible to, to film like uh, like a Ferris wheel or something, in even if it would be more logical to do that in, in this. <coughs> Does that affect your light at all, the way the, the light enters the sculpture and then converts it and it's transferred on the film? <coughs> I don't know. How, how does your lighting work for the way that you're having, you know, in 
No, it's a bit tricky to, uh, to uh, when you work with light and when you film in, in the circle, it's a bit tricky to actually to, to not get any <laughs> shadows from the camera because the camera is like huge in terms of how, uh, so it really uh, becomes a big shadow from the, so it's a bit tricky how to, to make uh, that work. And, uh, but otherwise it's like I'm working with the, for these films it's also like I, I, I'm not, a so good model maker it's like I do my best which means that it's it's uh, I, I can't work with a, a very good camera so I work with with a very normal uh, digital camera and uh, because if I have a sharper camera you immediately see that it's a model so it's kind of to work with the technique so it uh, so it's uh, so it's good, and it's also if the model becomes too good, then I lose one of the levels in the film because it's quite nice when you see in the model or in the film that it's you see this kind of, of traces from 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 me in the end. You see like glue dots and, and kind of badly built things and, and so on, which which is quite nice. So uh, it creates kind of an, another level of the of the work. I continue with my with my uh, films. This is a work called One Way Street, which I uh, which I did. It was a work that that Mark saw in in, in Stockholm, and and uh, this is the installation from from uh, from uh, Manifesta, uh, two thousand two in Frankfurt where the space was a bit uh, difficult because it was uh, like uh, it's uh, big windows and and uh, and I don't I didn't want to to kind of build take away the windows and because to create the sort of uh, what uh, what many people believe is sort of a non non uh, non architecture space the 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 white cube because it's really not like non-architecture -ar either it's just like a white cube but it's so it's better for me it's just to work with or try to work with the with the architecture and and uh, so what I did here was that I put on a uh, black uh, film on the windows and uh, so the the building outside becomes really also important in the installation you can really you feel when you watch the film you really feel the the building and, and it becomes some sort of strange surveillance architecture because it's a 70s style building with this, uh, yeah, so you really, it, it feels like someone is watching you while you're watching the film. And I, wor I, I worked many times with this kind of to just build up a wall <coughs> in the space so it becomes something it also that where I project the film becomes an object in itself so it really becomes something that you can walk around or even if you very seldom do it at least you can walk around
And this is also the first time where I, I have kind of created arch or it's a non it's a fictional architecture. It's not really from taken from anywhere. I try to create some sort of archetype of an on an uh, like glass building uh, street or like almost like if the film were in 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 color, it looks like uh, in really. Uh, kind of futuristic street and if it's in black and white it looks like a modernistic or modernistic street which is a bit strange in all of uh, in all these kind of movements films I also play with the or it's like I'm not a really a title artist which are working with the title as an important important part of the work but it's like I, I kind of play with I give them a, the idea of an of a movement and and it's really not the movement it's the movement that you see but it's not really the movement that the camera does in a way so here it's like this this is also in a model then and it's the, the model contains 12 buildings and it's six buildings on each side and it's six buildings that are repeated twice so you see so after three houses on the left side the same hu houses appear on the right side of the street seen from the other side so you see one movement <coughs> which is constantly going going like one way directly towards the kind of darkness but at the same time it's like you're turning around and going backwards and forwards again and again and again because you just see these three houses again or six houses again and again and again but they all look kind of similar also so it's very it's kind of hard to to um, to recognize that that you're doing the what kind of movement that you're doing or that you're meeting the same houses so it's like a built loop in that sense in the model and then it's also like uh, this is also the the other films are, are not edited at all they're just like an, they're just putting or put on play on the or record on the camera and then it's until the tapes end and this is quite or this is edited so it's also an edited loop where you see the 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 white house uh, to the right is the, the last house in the model and when the white house will appear on the left side it will be the first house in the model so it's like a three-dimensional cut and here you can also see because the editing person did some faults here so the house is jumping a bit the white house to the left which are coming in So the model is, this model is also a bit bigger, it's nine meters long. And this model from the beginning was more like a f normal film set. It was not that much about model because it was so big in a, w in a way. What I did was that I started to, to, to film, uh, the model is nine meters long and I started to film nine meters outside the model, which means that the first house is as small as the last house will be when the camera is in the position of being by the first house so I kind of use you will I use the material which I film outside the model to put in the end end of the street and then I kind of drag that like a you will maybe understand when I <laughs> when I show the model <coughs> let's go for that but here you have the here you have the cut you will also see a strange shadow which comes from the street because which is also where the cut is, or, or not the cut, but here comes the shadow. Here is the model.
So in all of this also work, I, I kind of invent systems how to do this movement, which should be impossible to do. It's like in this case, I, I called up uh, like film persons or editing persons and ask, ask them, okay, I want to do this. How, how should I do this? And they told me, okay, you need a, you need a computerized uh, like robot arm to move the camera like they do in Matrix and so on. And you can, you can find one of these in, then I was in Stockholm and, and that was one of them in, in Copenhagen where they have a studio with one of these. And, and uh, it costed like, uh, I don't know how much was it, it was like 10,000 uh, pounds an hour to be there and I needed to be there for like one and a half months or something. <laughs> 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 so it was not an option. So, uh, so then instead of spending the money on that, we built this kind of crappy wagon up in the corner <laughs> there, which works quite nice <laughs> and it's a bit cheaper. And it's all of all of these. It's the same, actually. It's the same uh, engine as I use for the for the circular models, which we just m changed it and and, and put wheels on it instead. So it moves. Uh, so it moves uh, this wagon. And you see here, it's wh while I'm filming here, and the camera wagon is here, and I start actually film out here. Then, and this house is very very. It's as small as the camp or it's as small as the last house when the camera are, are like somewhere here. And I filmed towards, uh, it's also more like a film set, the whole thing. I filmed towards uh, like a chroma key screen to be able to, to, put in the, to put in the film in the film, which is the editing trick then. But then in the end, it was also so, in terms of uh, we needed to do other stuff on the, uh, in the editing because uh, you see it's a lot of light that spreads in the space so you see on the on the walls in the in the room you see that you can actually see the walls and very often the camera films outside so we were because we were afraid of, of um, when you use projectors in exhibitions you never know what you need to do with the projectors you maybe need to push the light very high to because it's too it's a too bad projector or some, something, and, and then you, you um, suddenly could appear like a big door <laughs> on the, there, there it was supposed to be a sky. So, uh, so we needed to cut away all the, all the sky and just put black information there too, otherwise, yeah, it could be a total mess. On the this is another way I, I showed, just to show how, how I, I also worked with this. So, so this is, in Stockholm at Jaspis Gallery uh, and we borrowed, they have two spaces there so it's one on the west and, the, and one east, east uh, space. The east space is actually another gallery but we borrowed that gallery for this show and they are totally mirrored. So in one, one uh, space I showed the film and the other space I decided to work with the model or in, in uh, dialogue with Jaspis. Jaspis is a, is, a, is a residency program and uh, they don't do shows in that, that way. They, they mainly do shows which has uh, some sort of uh, uh, connection to the production. And so we, need, we wanted to do something more like production wise and I decided to work with the model. But what we did here is that we closed the backside of the of the of the cube, or what I did was to close the backside of the cubes, so it becomes almost like uh, like minimalistic uh, objects. It looks lo more almost like a like a, uh, uh, yeah quite boring uh, installation when you see the the model, and 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 then we put uh, like a computer to to the light system. On the so it's the model is is all the time like changing lights, so it goes from and it's suddenly it also fades out and becomes totally black and the light goes on in the space, which means that you see it as from the outside you really see it as a sculpture or as an object and then the the light fades out in the space and the model starts to become a street or a model again so it shifts like that it, uh, in a very filmic way and it's also shift as, 
as the position very often do for the viewer in my films, it shifts from being outside and inside, from being the one that takes decisions to continue like a movement, and then suddenly you realize that it's a model, or you, and then you're, you're totally outside again. And, and, uh, and the, with the model, it was kind of the same experience when you, you saw the model. It also became something, it became something else than just showing how I did the film. Because this was not how I did the film. All right. So now my my two two uh, uh, final works, which is uh, created the last year, and and uh, both of them were were kind of of uh, created with with uh, its two films and also a book which I made, and they are kind of made. In, in the knowledge of the first one, it, which I show now, is made with the knowledge of that I also will do the next one. And in this case, I play very much with, with the, the viewer and the viewer's body in, in how, how to receive these films and how to receive it in space when you, when you see it. Uh, uh <laughs> in this, I can, I can actually show because now it's not a sensation anymore when I relieve the information that it's a model so I can <laughs> but it's like in this case it's I decided I, I wanted I I would wanted to do like a, a piece where I for the first time use an object I wanted to create a situation where where something were like floating like weightless in in a room and uh, and I had tons of problems with with because I don't like to use objects in my films because I don't want to create a, a narrative structure and to start to tell a story with with the objects. I, w I, w I will I want to just do that with space, but in in in, in or with the rooms and and uh, in this case I after a while decided to to use a flower pot. Uh, which is quite nice when when people have filled all the all the spaces in my films before and kind of with their own stuff and then they see what what <coughs> has been missing from me and it was a flower pot but it's it's uh, uh, it's also in in terms of it's some sort of relation to 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 paintings and and uh, with the flower pot as or with the flower as a use of a life symbol or or or, or and it's it's quite nice with the with this kind of space where you just have this with flower pot and and I wanted to create a situation where I could could do or create a model where I, where I could uh, to make this flower pot really float like weightless and my first my first what I thought on then was this kind of small, I don't know what you call half square, wh uh, where you have uh, on Christmas, which you shake and it's like snowing, and uh, or whatever you have for things in there. And I was thinking on if I connected the camera to, to this kind of thing and, and really fixed it, then you don't see that the space is moving, or the, the kind of model world is moving, you just see the objects inside. So I decided to build like a, a gyroscope to be able to um, put uh, and build an aquarium which I was filling with with glycerol and and uh, and to be able to 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 move this move this uh, uh, room around and around and around so the only thing that were floating around was was the flower pot inside. I can. Here is when we are. are th it's quite complicated. Uh, it was much more. Com I decided because the two films I was doing. It's like I got support from them, or financial support, and I decided to do this first because I thought that should be the easiest one, and it was, of course, the <laughs> not the case. I show you the film. So it's an aquarium, well, because it's so much, the aquarium is maybe 100 liters, and the whole construction with the gyroscope, it's a weight of, of 200 kilograms, which are moving, and it becomes so high pressure. So it was really, really tough to make the aquarium to not break. 
and uh, and it was glycerol all over in the space and it was like a nightmare to to work with to just move a flower pot i'm sure it's an easier way to do it <laughs> And for like weeks, I worked with getting away the bubbles. And when I succeeded with that, it looked really bad because it looked like it was really an animation. It you couldn't you couldn't it it was like a cheap computer trick. It became too perfect. So I needed to go back to the bubbles again and and kind of make them to come into the aquarium and, and uh, to work with them because it becomes almost like a, they become it's quite interesting that the air bubbles becomes like objects it becomes really that the parts that are not material really becomes material and becomes almost like a small universe in there and this is also not edited at all so it's really like real time What removing the? Removing the I consider that also. I actually have test, tests on that also, but that was too much. It was like uh, <laughs> I wanted my flower pot. <laughs> uh, to the back wall, it's like uh, uh, forty, forty-five centimeters, maybe. The funny part, what happened is like I built really like a narrow. Uh, the the model is it's really. Uh, uh, what happened when you fill the aquarium with glycerol? What it became be, that the, the space looked totally different. It looked like it's a square when it's really like I don't know a rectangular space, and uh, and so I needed to work with wide angle lenses uh, to to kind of create all the same feeling that I I was out for from the beginning. And I wanted to, to have this, I very often try to, to work with spaces which are, are sort of between private and public, so you, don't really, you can't really define them if it's a private or a public space, it's some sort of strange, strange uh, architecture, which is, this is, I worked with some, or my idea was to create some 70s style room with this uh, thin, you can't almost see the stripes on the, on the on the wallpaper and so on, and it's uh, this kind of brown, thick carpet. But it's uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's it's also a bit hard to see with this projection here. And you can also see if you, but it's a bit hard to see what what's happening. It's like the. The aquarium is moving so fast, so the camera is actually moving a bit sometimes. So the, you can see if you fix the door, you can see sometimes that it goes up and down, which makes you, fe you feel quite strange when you, when you watch it. Because and what I wanted to do with this is, is I, I, did, I wanted to combine with this with, with the next film I'm doing, where I'm doing a totally reverse movement. Here you have the viewer standing really outside the projection the viewer is the only thing that follows the laws of, of gravity and uh, and uh, 
So the viewer's body becomes really, you become really obvious of your movements in the space and that you're outside this situation. I can't, I'll see here. Uh, And I wanted to work with the, with the, here when I'm filming it. <coughs> so what we do is, I, I talk about the next film, right? but it's what we do is that we're moving the whole, whole thing and the camera and the lightning system and everything is fixed. And then we have a transmitter, so I'm sitting and watching, watching the, watching a monitor and sometimes we also use a projector to see a bigger screen and watching the, the movement on the flower pot and are kind of shouting to this guy that are moving the how to move, move it faster, move it, the flower pot is in one corner, we, we need to bring it into the center of the, of the room again and so on. But after a while you really have no idea what, what's up and down and, and I, I just needed to trust because he, he, we, were film, we were filming so, for so long time for like because it's, I, I had a show where I was supposed to, to show this film and, and uh, the time was running out and we were th filming like 24 hours per day to be able to finish it. And in the end he was just like, he, when it was working and I was shouting to him if, it's, if he felt okay, if he could continue, then he, then he didn't answer. He was doing this kind of sound effects like and was standing and like moving as a dancer with, with the model. And I was just like sitting there and like, okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> but it was quite nice. And this is the same guy that also works with the next film, which called, or this project, which is my, my final thing I will talk about. It's called Invisible Cities, like the Int Italo Calvino book. And for this, I, I decided very early that I wanted to, I, the invisible cities for me, or I wanted to deal with, with these kind of in-between cities that are, are big enough so you can spend your entire lifetime in them without ever moving. And at the same time, so small that, that, uh, that people are kind of familiar to each other. Not that they know each other, but they kind of recognize the stranger. And these cities are, are uh, now it will come a lot of generalizations that it's not possible to do, but it's, it's, it's necessary to do it in this case to be able to do this work. But in the, I decided that the city that has these qualities are, are around 10,000 people to 100,000 people. Of course it differs all around the world and, and of course it differs with, with density and so on, but so, sort of, of uh, these kind of cities I wanted to work with, which are never spoken about. It was, they are the, not in political sense, not in, in architectural sense, it's like they are like forgotten because for a long time ago or very, uh, they were like almost like the ideal cities or these kind of, all the size of, of one of these cities, like around maybe 30, 35,000 people was very many like philosophers and so on that had, had like an utopian city. This was the perfect to, to create a, a good, good city. Nowadays it's more like 3 million or something to, to create or as an ideal utopian city. Or still there are cities like are built on this like uh, or try to do that like uh, or parts of big cities that deal with that of course that has this kind of uh, uh, <coughs> size as a, as a utopia or, or, or so on. And still there are cities that are built, like Celebration in Florida is built to be 20, 25,000 people, but it's just 2,000 people that lives there, I think. But I wanted to do, do a project about these cities, about that are, uh, to deal again with, with, with the gays and with outside and inside. And these cities are just invisible from the outside like the, it's the visible cities that makes them invisible and from the inside everybody is extremely visible. So I started to go, go around to, to, uh, to make location studies in different, different small towns and 
what I did in this series of photographs, I will show you tel 12 photographs, which all also <laughs> are in the book, that I took away all the windows from the buildings and kind of erased the uh, erased uh, uh, the people that were living in the cities. So I kind of give the idea, I give the viewer what they want to see. I give them the invisible city. I give them the ghost town. At the same time, as I wanted to place the viewer in a position of, of, of being the total outsider. So at the same time, I kind of, of, of leave the city for the viewer. No one can see, can see you there. The outside in one of these cities are the ones that are, are, are seen immediately. And uh, the, the, the persons that doesn't fit in. And uh, yeah. This is my hometown. And what I tried to do was I, I was looking for I was trying to find the perfect city to make a film in because I wanted to fly through a city like I, I was weightless, <coughs> like almost like an alien cre creature were, were like flying through the city where, where no one saw, saw the alien. And I was trying to find the perfect, like ideal city to work with this. And, and I was almost trying to find kind of the model city, like the city that were looking like a model because it's for this I was going to use the for the first time I was going to film in a real city and and uh, in the beginning I, I told you in the first work I told you that I, I kind of with the, f the model looked real and the real world looked like a model and now like almost eight or nine years later I, I try to work with the real as a model and uh, and uh, I went around to all these kind of, I, I choose be of, of uh, in terms of what was able to, when I know that I wanted to do the film, I, I choose the city in, in a certain area where, where, because I couldn't go the whole around the world, or I, I also choose to, to have it as like, I, I had like 20, 200 kilometers from the, the place or from Stockholm, around 200 in a circle like that I could go because that would be able to take a film crew there without getting too expensive. So that was the area I was scanning through from, from all of these cities. The photoshopping are not brilliant in every of them. It's a bit too much sometimes. This is actually from the city I, I choose to film in. So here is a sketch on the on the camera movement I was hoping to do. Uh, and let's play the film. And here is the first time I can also work with a better camera because uh, 
reality is good enough to, to actually work with a good camera. <laughs> and uh, But it's nice, the, the trees look exactly like model trees. <laughs> and what I meant before when I I worked with both these films like a, like a unit, even if they are not a unit, they are separate pieces, but I had in mind to show these two at, at, at uh, when I got to know that I was going to, to show at the Sao Paulo Biennale. I had in mind to show two pieces where, where one, you're really standing in, in, in the space watching something that have, has no gravity. In the other one, you have the total reverse. You're actually, you are the one that are flying through a situation that are almost like weightless in a situation where everything else follows the laws of, of gravity. And I wanted to, to kind of get the viewer into that position of being like, here in this case you become, because when you're standing in the space and watching this, you identify with, with the camera and, of, and you really become, you become outside your own body also because the movement is weightless, but you are standing in, in the space. So after a while you start to feel a bit sick, like you're seasick or something. And, and, uh, and in the other one you have the total reverse. And I wanted to, to kind of get the viewer in, in between these two positions and really being outside, being the one that makes something invisible. And in the same case at, at, as in the photos, I, I wanted to give the viewer what the viewer wants. I give them the invisible city. You don't see a single human being in the whole city. And you go through the whole city. So it becomes almost like a, a ghost town. Even if this city is, 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 uh, is not the... the it's, it's populated, it's working, it's like a city that it's... It's a bar there, it's a, it's a restaurant there, it's a hospital there, it's a police station and, and at school and so on. But at the same time, I give the, the outsider just what, what they kind of have created, even if it's not like, like that hard that it's just the outside people that makes these cities invisible. And I also pro project this quite big, and I did this in a, in a, the Sao Paulo Biennale is in the, in the Niemeyer building. So it's a big, huge glass building. So I, what I did is here is that I, I, I built a, a, like a 180 square meter big black glass pavilion where I had two freestanding walls in, in it. I will show you later on. But it becomes like from the outside, I, you meet the you meet the glass pavilion from a position where you really it's really closed and you can't see in. So you really need to walk and to get get around and, and get and get into the it's impossible to sap the piece. You really need to be inside to to be able to see it and you really and from the inside you can see everything because the glass is so you can see you can see the rest of the exhibition.
And in this case, it's nice because it's look it's like when I I I just as a test in my studio showed when I had the, like I'm in the residency program in New York now and and we had the like open studios there, and I just show, showed my five films on monitors like next to each other, and so many people believe that this also was a model or it was maybe that it was computer animated but it was no one that really believed that it was in a, in a real time or town or no one but it was the the usual thing that people thought from the beginning what it I was a hell of a model builder <laughs> here is the here you will have a scene where you have some some birds which is only humans you can see or or living creatures you can see and it's also nice because the it's almost no wind which become becomes also quite strange you see on the on the what you call these uh, flags yeah <laughs> they are almost not moving I'm not interested in for this case I wanted to to give the viewer what what the 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 viewer ha had created in a way I want to give them the invisible city and I want to give them the the like just the architecture just the ideal city uh, like just what you see here is everything becomes so obvious every like <laughs> yeah yeah it absolutely it's and this is a weird town, it's really fixed, it's really like, uh, it's really, uh, everything is like in, in order and everything is like a bit bigger than it was supposed to be. It's like the, the, the square outside the, the city hall, which is, uh, is way too big for that small city. It's like, no, it's even on during the day, it's like totally empty. And also the park, it's like, uh, it's... Uh, But very often, it, it's also in the uh, uh, other movies. It's it's like I want I want it to be architecture. I don't want it to be narrative structure with humans. I want it to be your space, your city. Like the the viewer in in the that are in the space are supposed to kind of walk into that situation. Are supposed to fly there as as a, like a, and in this also it's like. It's it's almost arrogant to to erase all the people uh, or or and but at the same time it's 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 also that it's when 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 I I go to this place with my small film crew and shoot to to project like project for everybody else the invisible city I, I give them nothing like I give the the ones that never goes there nothing. The projection of, of these cities like empty, yeah. so it's it's. Uh, it, it becomes for me a bit like going into <coughs> an entertainment park or some some way where you can um, understand your body in a different way, or it becomes like a tool or something to understand your own issues from your perspective. Soundtrack to the film. <coughs> this is nice. It's a perfect city. Stop. And it's also not not edited at all. So it's filmed in a uh, night time in Sweden, a summer night, when it's like around uh, uh, three thirty in the mor morning. <laughs> And here is the installation view from, from Sao Paulo Biennale and uh, the pavilion. 
where I showed the two two uh, films. So it was really, uh, it became a bit too much. I wanted to, be, I wanted really to force the viewer to walk and to, and I think I, I uh, it's like, it's a huge exhibition and, and it might be a mistake to have it totally closed from the from the position where you where you meet it even if I wanted it to kind of be like an, a closed situation it's conceptually it's totally right but it's like in terms of I want also people to see the film so to walk in there it was very many people that missed it because it becomes it also looked a bit like it could be the office in the Nima like could be some sort of or a sculpture in itself so it was a lot of people that missed it and it's also it's the entrance it's on the back side and and then when you when we walk in you don't see the films either there so you need to kind of walk through the whole space and really get enclosed by by the by the glass space and be inside the space to be able to see it so it's really impossible to zap it which mo mo more or less you do or i also do in in a group show like this to kind of watch fast and people uh, look into the door and they see like two walls just like and uh, and then they go somewhere else <laughs> so but from the inside when if you really walked in it was really nice because it's it's you can see all the it was really for a video installation you can see all the other pieces it was really integrated in architecture integrated in the show uh, and so on and that was quite nice actually and it was also everybody didn't miss it. But the art people go in there. But people that are, are not so familiar with art or, or, or which is, uh, they didn't go in there. And I was a bit surprised, but it's not that strange either. Let's see, I think I have. So here is how we shoot that. And it's the same guy that may are <laughs> having the funny job to move the camera again. <laughs> so what we did here from the beginning, we I was supposed to, to have a, a, a robot to, to move the camera, and, but it didn't work because it become it uh, the 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 camera arm were, were like shaking so much, so we needed a steady cam which means that, that we needed to put this guy up there and he really fucks up the steady cam model because the steady cam wants to be straight and he's like there and 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 make it to to move so it's like and we are sitting I am another guy sitting on the on the on the truck and are watching a monitor and talking with with walkie talkie and trying to make him to do the movements that we were supposed to do um, but we filmed for a week so also here in the end he was pretty much like into the rhythm and into how how it was supposed to feel but it was for me it was really strange because i have all the time like controlled the uh, controlled my miniatures and controlled almost like voodoo dolls like i have the total control of of the filmic situations and here it was another guy like up there and and he's my eye which was uh and he's uh, he's uh, quite weird, <laughs> so <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> so it was very it was very frustrating, and it's just like and uh, but at the same time he was the only guy that could do it, so it was just to sit back and and to 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 trust him, and uh, it was quite nice, nice experience, and finito. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Are you still awake? <laughs> Mark, how 
having heard Mark's lecture just before this session, I wondered if he wanted to say anything uh, about models and was able in any way to, to relate what he'd been saying earlier this afternoon to models. He may not want to do this, but it just struck me as almost compelling. Um, I don't think I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. I just want to remark, it's not a question, I want to remark on the, the role of laughter in presentation. I'm, I have nothing to say about it, but it's very striking. Um, and it's also very striking in the um, film you made with the flower pot. <coughs> I'm not sure what it is about it, and I think it's quite important. Yeah, it is important. To um, we uh, haven't got a very long time. Would people like to ask questions or follow through on? Sorry, I'm I'm just wondering. Um, I realized from the first film and the second film, you're trying to use the light to display the movement from bright to dark, from dark to bright. And do you think it's a kind of definition of space in your mind? Uh, sort of, it's it's for the first two films. I I I, I use. I use the light very much as also to, to, to sort of trick the viewer to stay in the film, almost, almost like set up an over-romantical light, so you, you kind of stay there, you, you see this. It's also very often this, the horizontal film is, is, is these kind of spaces where you very often have these kind of lightnings. When you see them in movies, it's these kind of beautiful beautiful light coming into these, uh, do you call them Patricia apartments or, or that kind of, I don't know if, you, if that's correct word in English, or but these kind of apartments or that kind of style very often have that kind of lightning when you, when you see them in images and so on. And then I wanted to, with the first film really I, want to, I worked with light as a written, as a kind of to, to change for the viewer to, to, to uh, so they kept interested. To, because I want them to stay so long so you get into a meditative state. So you almost get into the... So you don't... In the beginning you're waiting for what's going to happen, but very soon you realize that nothing is going to happen. But then I want them to stay anyway. Um. that I find amusing, but I haven't really encountered architecture that I find funny or comical. And I think with, it's encouraging, really, to see representation of space being full of humor. And I'm just you know, hoping that a comical architecture is not too far away from that. Yeah, that I'm happy to do uh, funny films. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, if it's, uh, it's not really the, the main uh, thing I hear about my films, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I'm glad. <laughs> um, there's a really great program very late at night on ITV. It's usually about one in the morning. And it's Magic Tricks Revealed. And um, you know, basically gives everything away as to uh, how they saw the lady in half or the spikes go through, you know, the unsuspecting assistant. <laughs> It's sort of interesting seeing your lecture after James Cassavier's last week, um, and seeing James has reminded me of obviously of Thomas Demands. And you know, compared to them, you're like this wonderful one one a.m. TV show. You know, there's this whole business of um, you're you see, revealing. You're drunk now after the bar, so it's almost yeah, the absolutely. same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a sort of sense in which you're there's a you know you're revealing. Uh, revealing the apparatus behind the illusion. Now, I'm wondering, well, A, why, um, in comparison, I mean, I'm wondering, A, I'm, I mean, it's just my own thought, whether it's a generational thing, because those guys are coming from, well, particularly James, you know, coming from certain sort Thomas of generation. Thomas is not at all. To no, absolutely. But I'm also wondering whether that, and it actually goes back to the last comment, which I thought was quite nice, um, whether somehow that has anything to do with the kind of 
aesthetics of, of boredom that are, that's somehow endemic in, you know, modern spe in, in, in the kind of modern space. I mean, you referred to, I think maybe you're struggling to find Carl Andre's name earlier, but, you know, that, that the, sort of high, the sort of boredom that's embedded in high modernism. Um, and I'm wondering whether that, that sort of revelation of the apparatus of illusion has anything to do with the relief of boredom <laughs> that we feel, you know, when we, when we watch these things. Yeah, it might be true. It's like, in terms of why I, I, in, I just heard, or you told me before, that uh, James Casabere didn't reveal anything. <laughs> and it's like, for me, it's, it's also different things in, like, having a lecture and, and showing, doing an installation. And I, I can't do the installation here. So then I choose to, to do it in a way which I think could be interesting. And, uh, and of course it's more interesting to, if, to just put on my films and sit here because I don't want any sound. So I will sit here quiet for, for, uh, for uh, and I don't want to put it on and off because I want it to, to just go forever. So it will be like a very long lecture. So you need to kind of talk and you, you need, to, you need to, to also display the, the things. And in, in this context also when, when it's uh, architecture school and uh, and uh, so that's why and it's also in sometimes I, I, I show them in in uh, in also in exhibitions and so on and then it's it's then it's because some parts actually as a funny like the the in the toilets it becomes very funny when you open them it's a laugh and the, and uh, and so on and uh, yeah, I can't answer. I think actually Thomas, if he will have a lecture, I think he will show his like back or behind the, the sceneries also. But I mean, in a sense, it, it also bears on, I mean, you say two things. Uh, one, that, you know, people um, kind of often take uh, the corridor and the lift, as it were, as real spaces. And by contrast, they want to kind of insist on the modelled character uh, of the last landscape. Now, I mean, it, it seems to me that in a sense, you, you show very well um, that the reason why those effects, differential effects, are generated um, is because of the modelled position of the point of view. That is to say that in the first set, uh, a kind of promenade along a corridor, uh, a movement kind of through a lift space. They're completely conventionalized points of view. And so a kind of, uh, kind of penumbra of normality is thrown over the scene, which obscures, you know, what, if you're looking carefully, already is an absurd set of geometries and whatever and kind of cast shadow. Whereas, in, as it were, by contrast, in the last one, the kind of artificial bird or whatever that's created the completely unconventional character uh, of the point of view kind of spreads the effect across the representation of the scene that it's a model and that it's completely artificial. And so I think it's an astonishing display of like the power of the point of view to kind of generate how one kind of appreciates, how one understands, how one perceives uh, the actual kind of image. Um, because it, it, it's incredibly convincing, that notion that uh, the last one is modeled. There's something really bizarre when you start seeing the birds you know, you think, like, where did they buy those? I mean, I, you know, those are really neat little models. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have a... Okay, well, I think we should end. And really, everyone has had an incredibly enjoyable and interesting evening. Jones, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.